everyone. In this two-part video series, I'll be going over the entire process of cutting out a sheet metal part on our CNC router. In part one, I'll be going over how to create the toolpath for the part in HSM Works. So the part I'll be will be making is uh, this battery holder that I designed for Team 3863 for use on their swerve module, which looks like this. So first thing, first thing you're going to do is insert it, insert that part into an assembly. So here I've put it into assembly in the same orientation that I'm going to be cutting it out. Um, and then start off, we're going to create a sketch, boundary sketch, uh, in order to create our zero point. So you're going to make that sketch on that top surface of the part, and then we're going to offset it 3 eighths of an inch from each edge. Just like that. And then we're going to want to create a coordinate system right on this edge. And this coordinate system will be the zero point for our part when we zero it on this when we zero it on the CNC. So x-axis, we're gonna pick this one, y-axis this, and then z-axis, you can pick any vertical one. And it's gonna reverse these until they line up properly to how it should be on the CNC. So on our CNC, the x positive is that direction, and the Y positive is this direction, the X positive is this direction. Next, we're going to come over and create a new job using this, using the part as the model, and then the work coordinate system as that coordinate system we just created. Just like that. Uh, and the first step we're going to take is uh, to create some whole models in order to screw down this big pocket that we that we're going to cut out. Since we're using a contour to cut out this interior right here, uh, it's going to leave a giant hunk of metal, uh, which will damage your end mill if it's not secured down. So we're going to uh, create a new part, not a sketch. Create a new part on this top surface here. And then we're going to want to convert entities, convert this interior here. Uh, select inner loops on my one, so we're going to select that inner loop. And then we're going to want to offset that by... It uh, doesn't really what what value you pick since we're going to delete that dimension and uh, redimension it using some construction geometry. So we're going to create the, well, uh, the bolt head, the screw head, which holds the part down, and that's the 3 8 diameter. Uh, and then we're going to want to draw out the uh, the end mill. So the end mill here, uh, we use a 316 end mill, so you're going to leave about quarter inch and quarter inch of space for the end mill to run through, and then we just set that tangent. So this way, um, the end mill is going to have clearance around that bolt head, so we don't run into it. But it's also at the furthest point out in order just to keep the part secure. Next, we just want to draw a couple more circle on each corner and set those all equal to this 3 8 hole. And then you're going to select uh, these edges and turn them into construction geometry. And this larger circle. I'm just going to extrude these four holes go up to surface. You have now you have these four little knobs. Then I'm just going to put a 316 uh, diameter hole through all of these. So I just use hole wizard to place a point at each of these. And just like that. Now we have these four screw holes uh, that we'll be cutting out along with all the other holes on here in order to hold down the part. So the first thing we're going to do. So, so the first tool path we're going to do is uh, with the bore feature. So we'll be using an eighth inch end mill uh, to cut out all of these holes except for these two. These two are slightly larger. These are quarter inch holes. So we'll be doing using cutting these out using the 316 end mill actually. Uh, we'll be running it at 16,000 RPM 
uh, kayak feeder at 25, lead in 5, lead out 20, ramp 20, and plunge 2. I like to set my plunge really slow because uh, I won't actually be, the toolbox shouldn't plunge at all, and so if it does, if it, you know, for some reason it ends up plunging, we don't, we have time to react to stop the CNC. And then you just want to select every single hole. And so the reason why we use the bore feature instead of uh, drilling using a drill bit is because the end, eighth inch end mill ends up uh, being cut to the holes faster since uh, with a drill you're going to need to spot drill it and then use a drill bit. And it also leaves a cleaner finish. So just like that, all the holes are selected. And then for our heights, uh, clearance height, uh, you just set that with default is 0.4. And then for our retract height, we're only going to go half inch from the stock top. Uh, this and it this allows us to um, this ensures that we don't you know end mill doesn't hit anything straight that's you know standing up. Like uh, later on, uh, we'll be putting screws in these screws in all these holes. We don't want the tool path to hit those screws. And then for the bottom, we're going to want to go fifty thou under under the whole bottom. This basically just ensures that the end mill cuts all the way through the hole. Uh, pitch, thread pitch, uh, typically I just leave it at uh, 70 thou. If I found that's a good um, ratio of uh, cutting horizontally and going down. And then linking, you can leave that alone. Next, we're going to want to cut out these two slots using the 8th inch end mill, so we'll be using 2D contour. Uh, using the same tool at the same feeds and speeds, just going to select the bottom edge of these holes. We're going to hit reverse if the arrow is on the wrong side of that contour. Just like that. Uh, same thing goes for the heights, we want that to be 50, uh, half an inch above the retract height. And then for the bottom height, we're going to go 50 thou under the material to ensure that the end mill cuts all the way through. Uh, since this is a fairly thick material, we're going to be using multiple depths. Uh, we'll be taking three s steps. Uh, so you have quarter inch of material and then your 50 thou. Uh, extra cutting on the bottom gives you a total of 0.3 inches that you need to cut down. So we just divide that by three uh, to get 0.1 inch steps, 3.1 inch steps. And then we're also going to want to ramp it, ramp the cutting. So we get two degrees and then our ramp clearance height, we set that to 20 thou above the material. You can see here it starts ramping at 20 thou above the material and then it goes three steps down. Next we're going to want to use the 316 end mill to bore out those holes. So like the bore tool again. And then Change our tool over to the 316 end mill, we'll be cutting out at 30 IPM, uh, 19,000 RPM. The model is select these two holes. Uh, for the height, same thing as before, you know, half inch above retract, retract height, half inch above the stock top, and then bottom, 50 thou below the bottom of the hole. If the passes, we'll do 70 thou uh, thread pitch, and then you leave that alone. Uh, next, we're going to want to cut out all of the pockets on here using a 2D contour. So use the same tool again, 316 end mill, same feeds and speeds, 19,000 RPM, 30 IPM. And just select all the edges. And you want to make sure that you only select the interior edges so that we want the end mill to cut out the insides inside pockets first and then do an outline here. Uh, the height, same thing as before, 50 thou under, half an inch above the top. Uh, and we're going to want to use multiple depths again. So you have, explain again, you have quarter inch of material and then 50 thou of extra cutting on the bottom. And then that's 0.3 inches and then just divide that by three and you get 0.1 inch steps. And we're also going to want to ramp this two degrees 
and start ramping at 20 thou above the top of the part. Just like that. And as you see here again, uh, when the CNC cuts out this middle section, since we have the screws holding down that big chunk of metal that's left behind there, it, the, well, there will be no danger of the big flat piece flying out at you. And finally, we're going to want to cut that outside. So same tool, same fees and speeds, same heights, same ramping settings. Um, same as before, it's just the outside of the part, like that. Uh, and then lastly, we're just going to post these. So we'll do both of these eighth inch tool paths. We'll post those at the same time. And we'll post those. Um, you just want to save those into your USB. So I'll just post them into the toolpath folder here. Uh, I'll name this one 1 1 eighth end mill. This signifies that it's the first toolpath to run and it is the eighth inch end mill. Next, uh, I'm going to um, post these two programs. So these are going to be, this is going to be two second toolpath to run and then 316 end mill. And then finally, we're going to do the outside. Three, third path, third tool path to run, 316 end mill. And uh, I just want to put those on a USB and then take them over to the CNC to be cut in part two.